In our modern world, we are ever more reliant on space, whether we realise it or not. GPS, Google Earth, television, communication, navigation, mapping, human exploration and experimentation, and spying on people. Our modern world could not exist without it. Which is why the Kessler Syndrome is so terrifying. It threatens to knock out that pillar of society. And what's more, it is inevitable. It will happen. And is happening right now. And it is scary as hell. But first, I think we need a little explanation. Now, I like astrophysics. But you don't need to know everything about that field to understand the titular Kessler Syndrome. You just need to understand that things in orbit stay in orbit by going extremely fast sideways. So fast that the Earth curves as quickly as you can fall. Therefore, you can never touch the ground and you orbit. Simple, right? So these satellites, space stations, government secret things, spent rocket stages, metal debris pieces, are flying around the Earth incredibly fast. In fact, according to space.com, there are half a million of these pieces. Some estimates are even higher than that, and even these don't include the pieces small enough to slip under the radar. Or natural objects like micrometeorites. These things orbit at different altitudes in even different directions, like polar orbits that go over the poles, prograde orbits that go the same direction as the rotation of the planet, retrograde orbits that go the other way, inclined orbits that are basically just tilted, and other seemingly random ones. Pick an altitude and a direction, and there's most likely a piece of something nearby. To prove my point, yeah, this map shows a small selection of debris in orbit. Every single white object is an orbiting piece of debris. To add another thing to the chaos, thanks to the wobble of the Earth and other planetary habits, these orbits can be shifted and moved around. So if that spot was empty, it won't be in a few months or years. With this orbiting cloud of madness, it's not surprising that collisions are a thing to be wary of. In May of 2013, two satellites collided with an old spent Russian stage in a neighbouring orbit, and thereby caused a huge cloud of debris and shrapnel. These things happen every few years with increasing occurrence. You can check out a list of them in the description. Now, here's the thing. Every collision that occurs is often only between two or three objects, yet several thousand new ones are formed in the form of debris and shrapnel. Often, a single piece of flying debris can take out an entire satellite due to the immense speeds at work. If one hits an object travelling in the opposite direction, the impact speed will be 14 kilometres per second. You wouldn't even see it coming, or see it at all. These speeds launch new debris into new orbits, and in the way of new things. Thanks to these collisions, thousands of new orbiting items are introduced to the system every single time, and this increases the amount of occurrence of impacts, since there are more things now to crash into. Any of these collisions will speed up the average time between more collisions, and this continues. This is the Kessler Syndrome, where a pattern of impact speeds up and snowballs to the point where a good portion of satellites have been obliterated into the space equivalent of sand. This was predicted to happen by Donald J. Kessler, and as a result the syndrome bears his name. The scary part is, wait, no, one of the scary parts is that uh, this was in 1978. Since then, how much more have we put into orbit? How many times quicker are the collisions happening? And, as a society, how much more are we reliant on these things? But the scary part is yet to come. As the Kessler Syndrome takes hold and slowly, uh, no sorry, quickly, important and even vital objects are taken out. This will continue until there is nothing left to collide with, which even includes other pieces of shrapnel. The end product? The Earth is surrounded by high-speed flying sand, willing and able to obliterate any craft 
that enters Earth orbit. This is a barrier to all human exploration into the future, and it can stay like that for generations. This will seriously slow down, no, stop, development as a civilization or species, since space is ultimately where we'll expand to next. For avid moviegoers, you might recognise this as a scenario in the 2013 sci-fi space blockbuster Gravity, where a Russian satellite is destroyed purposely by a missile, which is actually a thing countries do to spy satellites. This instigates a chain reaction, aka the Kessler Syndrome, and the debris destroys pretty much everything while our heroine escapes it and manages to survive. Oh, yeah, spoilers, but you should have seen it by now. Unfortunately, the situation doesn't end with a walk into the sunset. For us, it doesn't end at all. We, our children, or grandchildren, or great-grandchildren, will have to deal with this. Now, don't get me wrong, humans are working on this. There are tests and prototypes in development as we speak. Some will latch onto space junk and kamikaze, deorbit and burn up in the atmosphere. Some use harpoons to latch onto space debris. Some use conventional engines. Some use solar sails or RCS or other unconventional methods. But these have been criticised as inefficient since they only eradicate one piece at a time. Other criticisms are related to other specifics, such as putting it up there, or construction, or whether it's worth it as the rocket will inevitably just cause more debris. This is why these things are still in development. So, to wrap this up, you now know what the Kessler Syndrome is, how it works, why it is happening, what will happen, and more. Not the solution, though. We don't know that bit yet. Thank you for watching.